Hi, we're looking at a mirror here and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to use surface evaluation tools to determine exactly what condition your model is in vis-a-vis -vis curvature continuity and also I'd like to work into the tutorial a little bit of information about the design process and how the design uh, is evolved obviously to increase the design quality and the quality of the surfacing. So this is the uh, dynamic section control and first of all if we look at, um, I'll turn on the model just for a second. You see I've clipped the model which I can do in the dy dynamic section control toolbox. I've clipped it there and there so we're just looking at a part of the mirror to keep the view uh, simple and we've got the body of the mirror, the blend and the three sections here, three surfaces for the, the back of the mirror. So now I'm going to turn the, the model off for a second and let's have a, a look and analyze what's going on. So the outboard section here is, is pretty good. Uh, you have a G3 there, you have uh, a little um, kind of bump, bump, they're very small and you have G2 there. What is disturbing is this acceleration towards the front of the mirror housing there. But generally speaking, that's quite a nice section. This section also very nice G3 here. Um, still, you know, I'm not sure about this acceleration here. This would be up to the designer whether he actually wanted that. It looks to me like the modeler has done this very purposefully. So let's assume that that was in the design brief and then coming down here we have this um, consistency here of uh, kind of failure to achieve G3 and we're settling for G2 which is clearly shown in the visual curves here by this dipping in the visual curves. What else can we learn by looking at the model? What I want to say is this is an excellent model as a concept model made from blueprints you couldn't expect it really to be much much better than, than this. Here we have a flat. This is in the back of the mirror. In the next section we see that the flat seems to have gone and that's the case here. And then generally speaking if we look at the back of the mirror and I'll put the surfaces back on again for a moment we'll see that it's in this middle surface here we have quite a lot of peaking going on here you know but that kind of uh, disappears towards the front of this this surface now you know, what that tells me is that probably that is going to cause a problem within this blend because of the um, inconsistency but not necessarily one would have to study the blend as well so here the blend looks very nice doesn't it so it's got a nice evenness about it and it's probably I was trying to see any if there's any let me turn the model off again I'm trying to see if there's any bulging in the blend and it doesn't show up very well with these curve combs but it shows up here it could be but you know this could also be an illusion because if, if we look from the you know more from from the top we see that this uh, visual curve is curving that way so when we view it from here it can tend to make it look like a, a bulge that isn't actually there so I would say you know believe the curvature combs and the curvature combs saying quite clearly no bulge just blend with peak and G2 and that seems to be the pattern all the way through and that is nice and consistent so you know I would say it's a pretty good piece of modeling considering that this student doesn't have any uh, scan data to work from. Let me show you how this tool works for those of you who are not really got much experience of it. You pick it there they, on the, the axis there which is the Y axis in this case and then you can kind of trammel those along. This circle here is a very good sign that the form uh, of the mirror is consistent. 
we want to we can turn on and turn off these combs and uh, in the dynamic section control options box we can adjust the scale of these combs in other words how tall they are sometimes we want them turned off because we want to be able to see more clearly the section lines and the visual curve you can see and also you can see that once you turn the visual the uh, curve comb off you can read these uh, these lines more which are the geometry from the dynamic section tool you know you can ask it to create geometry so all in all that's pretty good isn't it I would say that you know if I was the designer I would want to put a little bit more crown in you know from about here see we've got a lot of crown here and here and then it will start to lose it there and we're actually pretty pretty much flat there which is never good in automotive design and I noticed that the bottom of the mirror is a lot better it has a lot more curvature in it in this this part of the body here so then just to finish off let's talk a little bit about the design process this is as good as you can get uh, modeling in alias from blueprints so the next stage would be to uh, data transfer this and then mill it out uh, and make um, either a clay model and work on that or a hard model out of say you know solid um, polyester and then you know the hard modelers can fill it and uh, you know reduce it with wet and dry paper until they get all the little glitches out of the model and the you know the designer is going to be there watching and giving uh, you know his or her input and then it might get you know it might get fed back into to you as the alias guy to sort out um, or it may go straight to a technical surfacer who does the kind of uh, you know really top level model uh, to go to um, downline uh, tooling or whatever and just to finish off if I can perhaps show you a few things that you can adjust with use of this tool you've got a number of planes so you can increase those obviously you can slide them and reposition them like this okay and then the step size that's the distance apart of the, of the planes is is done there okay and it's easier to type it in I'm going to type a value of 1 in there there they are I just want to finish off this talk by showing you the uh, evaluation shader this is Prince Max and um, it, whilst it's very useful for certain things like it shows you here for example we have a very constant blend section going on there which is very nice and meeting very clearly here with G2 and G2 and it also shows you down here that you have G3 this red is indicating that we have the same curvature uh, condition same amount of curvature flowing all the way around here we have G3 with um, you know a couple of little perhaps areas there that, that need to be looked at more closely and down here you can see we we fall out of G3 and we go back into sharp uh, G2 and here again and the, the point I was making earlier about the peak being quite low down on the mirror you, you can see that's borne out here because that's the patch from there to there and the peak is down here so I hope that you found this talk uh, useful and interesting and thank you very much for taking the time to watch my video. I've been Graham Bullock from learningalias.co.uk. Thank you.